Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today is a vlog day. I'll be talking briefly about the Call of Schools, then we'll move on to something a little bit more interesting. As many of you might know, uh, I started the Call of Schools in March, and so far I have received quite a few pieces. The reason that I have not made an official announcement of which pieces have been selected is that I believe in second reading and sometimes certain pieces don't uh, look as engaging and interesting uh, when you read through it the first time but when you return to it the second time it usually reveals uh, more details than before and so this is how I uh, treat the pieces that I've received so far. That's why I haven't made an official announcement about the core but um, I'll keep working on the music and uh, the reason that the series seems to have gone off schedule is because I actually have went to uh, make a slightly different uh, video, a longer video, uh, which I'll talk about at the end of this vlog. Uh, but the upcoming uh, Call of Scores video is going to be, as I've mentioned before, Andreas Bäumler's Calligraphy 2 for solo alto flute. I should be able to shoot the video this coming week and release it the week after. So keep me on track with that and I'll try my best to keep the promise about releasing it two weeks later. Now off to something a little bit more interesting. A couple of days ago uh, I was on Facebook and I was tagged by the French composer Frank Bedrosian and the post was one of those 15 uh, CD albums that have significantly changed your musical taste challenge uh, where you are supposed to post one CD cover per day with no explanation and tag friend to continue the challenge and since I am a little bit of a rule breaker I like to do things my way and so when I received this tag I thought actually this is prime YouTube material. I am going to produce three vlogs and in each one of them I will be presenting five CDs that uh, have taken part in shaping my musical taste and today we'll be sharing five of them. Now the first one, no surprise there, is actually Frank Badorsian's Manifesto album released on the Aeon label. The album covers quite a few works by Frank Badorsian and one of them is actually it for seven musicians. <laughs> This piece was actually the first work by Frank Patrosin that I've ever heard and I remember hearing it as a secondary school kid and was really really struck by the directness and the rawness of the music and for the longest time I thought I will never have the chance to actually perform it but I managed to find the opportunity to perform this uh, piece with some of my friends at the Prism Gym Music Festival. We played what is probably the Hong Kong, if not Asian, premiere of the work and uh, it was a fantastic experience uh, rehearsing and performing the piece and uh, I hope that is the first of many more performances to come. Next up on the list is the singles Los 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 from the Japanese anime series Yojo Senki otherwise known as Saga of Tanya the Evil. I'm not going to spoil the plot of the series for you, but the interesting thing about this song is that sometimes you learn things from the least expected of places. And uh, while listening to this song, I was struck by how cleverly the composer used uh, repetitive structures. And the revelation to me is that in contemporary music, we often find that we are unable to memorize certain pieces because there aren't audible repetitive structures. And so this was something that I found also lacking in my own writing. It has changed the way I think about how I would continue to write uh, new works. And so in a way, in a strange way, uh, it has been a very influential piece. And next on the list is something that's quite interesting and something that I've only discovered fairly recently. Uh, it is the Vapor Wave album called Soul Control 
created by the Vaporwave artist Soul Control Enterprises. The curious thing about the genre of Vaporwave is that it covers a lot of different other subgenres. So, for example, there are albums that are categorized as being Vapor that sounds more like ambient music than Vaporwave. And you can also find other albums that may sound like film music. In the case of this particular album, it focuses on the technique of distortion. So sometimes with Vaporwave music, the method of treating the recording is actually more important than the content of the recording itself. In this album, you'll find that the composer or the, the producer is using different methods to distort the recording of pieces of music. The, the music is actually what you would think as more background music and so it's very cheesy it's uh, very rhythmic it's very uplifting but it's also got that nostalgic vibe of the 80s and the 90s and being born in the 90s it does bring back vague memories of something i've heard as a child but not quite sure what it is and overall it's a very interesting find for me next on the list without a shadow of doubt is the genre of dark ambient and the album is self-destruction themes by the artist word clock and what i really like about this music is that you can really uh, become completely immersed in the music without your attention being directed at a particular uh, musical object for example melody or rhythm but in the case of this album it's all about sonic immersion and you can really fall asleep to this music in the best sense of the term. The last album of today is going to be The Ring Cycle by Richard Wagner, conducted by Sir George Schulte. I personally like the way Schulte convinced the musicians to really produce at times really searing hot sound quality. <laughs> And in other times, very, very transparent and light textures. And for me, the bombastic uh, quality that is sometimes present in the interpretation is actually something that I really enjoy about uh, Schulte's interpretation. It's something that I still keep proudly in my iPod. And yes, I do use an iPod, not an iPhone. That's the five albums for today. And I have tagged five friends on Facebook uh, alongside this video. So if you've been tagged, then you know what to do. But don't be pressured into doing anything if you don't want to. The last thing I want to talk about today is the video that I've mentioned uh, at the beginning of this vlog. Uh, the video that I went off schedule to make. Without further ado, I just want to um, give you a sample of the video. If you think that the name sounds remotely familiar to another piece by a certain American composer called John Cage, then you are absolutely right. <laughs> The first group that comes in at measure 26 presents almost like a fugal subject in its uh, first incarnation. Kind of wrecky. Uh, you wrecky my ears. Yes, you've guessed it. It's a video about Krzysztof Penderecki. The great Polish composer passed away quite a few weeks ago and I was very moved by his passing to um, revisit some of his music the first ever Penderecki piece that I've heard uh, as a young music student was the Threnody to the Victims of Hiroshima. And I wanted to do an introduction to the piece, but also to Penderecki in general. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about his uh, stylistic characteristics, but also a little bit about his early life and how his music has changed over the times. So stay tuned for the premiere. Uh, that's going to be happening on Monday, Hong Kong time, uh, 10.30. So...
I'll see you there.、Uh, I'll be at the premiere, and I'll be very happy to be chatting with anyone who is watching the premiere alongside me. So that's it for today.、Uh, subscribe if you haven't, like the video, comment, and share it with your friends. And I'll see you in the next video. So, bye bye.